The book of Luke, chapter 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I praise God tonight for verse 10. Because that verse included me. May we pray together. Father, in Jesus' name. May the Spirit of Christ that indwells my life empower me tonight to proclaim the Word of God. I pray that you give us ears to hear and hearts to receive your inspired Word. Give us the gift of imagination tonight as I bring this message. And above all, may Christ be exalted and Jesus be high and lifted up. In his name I pray, amen. When I was just a lad, we used to go to Bible school and vacation Bible school and Sunday school and sing a little song that went something like this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed his way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you make haste, for I'm going to your house today. Little did I know as a youngster singing that song that one day God would give me a message on this biblical character, a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Now, the Bible teaches us several things about this man. The Bible teaches us that, first of all, he was a publican. Secondly, we understand that he was very rich. And thirdly, we understand that it could have very possibly been his duty to go from house to house, rightfully collecting the taxes that were owed to the government. Tonight I'm going to ask you to take a journey with me. As Zacchaeus goes and visits four homes, endeavoring to collect the taxes that are owed to his government. He arises early in the morning. He is clean-shaven and clean-clothed, and he begins his journey down a long, dusty road. Suddenly he comes to the door of the first house. And he knocks upon the door. As he knocks upon the door, a gentleman responds and he introduces himself and says, Sir, I am Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Your taxes are due this day. And the old gentleman begins to weep. And he looks to him and says, Mr. Zacchaeus, sir, I know who you are. And sir, I understand why you are here. But Mr. Zacchaeus, I am blind. And sir, I cannot work as other men work. 
And Mr. Zacchaeus, sir, I'm asking you that you grant me mercy for 30 days. And Mr. Zacchaeus, when you return in 30 days, I assure you that taxes will be paid. Mr. Zacchaeus saw that indeed this man was blind and he could not work as other men work. He declares, sir, I will return in 30 days, but understand when I return, your taxes must be paid. So he now continues his journey and he goes to the second house of the day. This time a lady responds and she is yellow from the top of her head to the very bottom of her feet. She begins to weep and declares, Mr. Zacchaeus, sir, I know who you are and I understand why you are here. But Mr. Zacchaeus, I have been diagnosed with an incurable blood disease. And Mr. Zacchaeus, all of the money that I had saved to pay for my taxes had been consumed by the many medical expenses. Mr. Zacchaeus, sir, would it be possible that you grant me mercy for 30 days? Mr. Zacchaeus saw that indeed this woman was very sick. He had granted mercy to the blind man and he declared, Man, I understand your physical condition. I understand you're a very sick woman, but you also need to understand I have a job to do. I'm granting you mercy for 30 days, but ma'am, when I return in 30 days, your taxes must be paid. He now continues his journey and he goes to the door of the third house and he knocks upon the door. This time a lady responds and she is wearing a ragged dress. There are dark circles under her eyes signifying that it had been many nights since she had had a full night's sleep. And about that time three little children come and huddle at her side and they're wearing ragged clothes. Their little bellies are empty because it had been many weeks since they had had a decent meal. And about that time, he hears an unusual noise from behind the house and he looks and there he sees a man who is running nude, ripping the tombstones apart and tearing his flesh, running as a wild man. She begins to weep and declares, Mr. Zacchaeus, sir, that is my husband. He is possessed of demons from another world. And Mr. Zacchaeus, I'm working three jobs and it's taking all that I can make and scrape to supply the essentials for my children. Mr. Zacchaeus, could you please grant me mercy for 30 days? Mr. Zacchaeus saw that indeed this man was possessed of demons. He was not anxious to stay around and he declared, Ma'am, I will return in 30 days, but in 30 days when I return, your taxes must be paid. He now goes to the final house of the day and he knocks upon the door. This time a lady responds and she is wearing black. A veil covers her face and she begins to weep bitterly and declares, Oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, I understand why you are here today. But Mr. Zacchaeus, I have lost my only son. I shall bury him tomorrow. And all of the money that I had saved to pay for my taxes have been consumed by the funeral expenses. Sir, could you grant me mercy for... 30 days. He declares, ma'am, I will return in 30 days, but in 30 days when I return, your taxes must be paid. Are you still listening? Say amen if you are. So very hurriedly, those 30 days do pass. Mr. Zacchaeus awakens early in the morning and suddenly he is reminded that this is the day that he must visit four homes. That in 30 days previous, he had encountered some of the most horrible experiences of his life. 
But he goes down that same long, dusty road. And suddenly he comes to the door of the first house. As he knocks upon the door, he waits for just a moment and seemingly no one is there and he gently knocks again. And a gentleman responds and there is a smile on his face. There is joy in his heart and there is a special twinkle in his eye. And he declares, sir, I desire to see the master of the house, please. The old gentleman responds, Sir, I am the master of this house. But he said, Sir, I was here 30 days ago and the master of this house was blind. I believe it was there the old gentleman began to sing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, I was blind, but that was before the day Jesus passed by my house. And Mr. Zacchaeus, I'm a new man now. Mr. Zacchaeus, I'm a working man now. All for the call, say, Jesus of Nazareth, pass by my house. And I want to join my hands and unite my heart tonight with blind Bartimaeus and declare unto you in Cincinnati, Ohio, there was a day that I was blind to the good things of God. There was a day that I was blinded to the goodness of His salvation. But the same Jesus that passed by and restored sight to blind Bartimaeus passed by a little country Baptist church back in East Tennessee to see. He opened my blinded eyes and I can see tonight because of Christ. Oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, do you remember my seeing eye dog? He said, I don't need him anymore. Sold him to my neighbor down the road. Here's your money for your taxes. Go in peace. In Jesus' name. He now continues his journey to the next house. He knocks upon the door and this time a lady responds and she is smiling and there is a special twinkle in her eyes and there is a fresh rose color flowing through her cheeks. And he declares, ma'am, I desire to see the master of the house, please. And she responds, sir, I am the master of this house. But he said, ma'am, I was here 30 days ago and the lady who lived here had an incurable blood disease. She said, oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, that was me. But that was before the day a mighty man, a miracle working man by the name of Jesus passed by me on the side of the road. Mr. Zacchaeus, sit down here on the porch just a minute. Let me tell you about the greatest. Let me tell you about the grandest day of my life. I was on the way to the drugstore and I heard someone cry out, Here comes Jesus. I had heard of this man. I had heard of his ministry. I knew of his miracles. And as Jesus drew closer, there was something that arose in my heart. There was a confirmation in my spirit that if I could just touch him, I know I could be made whole. Here's the deal, Mr. Zacchaeus. There was such a crowd around Jesus, I could not get to Jesus. So that day, Jesus had to come to me. And as Jesus passed by, I reached out. I touched the hem of His garment. And the moment that I touched Jesus, instantly, gloriously, and miraculously, there was a blood transfusion performed in my life. All things passed away. All things became new in Christ. And I am a new creation now. Y'all just sit there, I'll have a spell by myself, amen? I'm telling you, Mr. Zacchaeus, things changed around here when a man called Jesus passed by. 
What are you saying, Brother Phil? I'm saying I am not a liberal. I am a Bible-thumping, Bible-believing conservative, and I believe in all of the miracles of the Bible. And as sure as I'm standing in Cincinnati, Ohio tonight, one day Jesus passed by. That woman touched Him, and gloriously she was healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Mr. Zacchaeus. Maybe you can meet Jesus someday. See, I touched him too. I touched him too. That morning in that little country Baptist church, my daddy was preaching the old-fashioned gospel under the anointing of the Spirit and the seasoning of the living God. And that morning when I was nine years old, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart for the very first time. And in that service, I said yes to Christ. By faith, I reached out and I touched Him. Instantly and gloriously and miraculously, there was a royal blood transfusion performed in my life. All things passed away. All things became new in Christ. And I've never been the same since the day Jesus passed by. Mr. Zacchaeus, maybe you can meet Jesus someday. He now goes to the third house. Do y'all believe this? You say, you can't prove this happened, preacher. You can't prove it didn't happen this way. Amen. He knocks on the door of the third house. As he knocks upon the door, a lady responds. Guess what? She's smiling. She's got a new hairdo. She's got on makeup. She's got a new dress. Say amen, ladies. That's the best shot you're going to have tonight. She's been to the mall. She's got a new dress. And about that time, three little children come and huddle at her side. Man, they have on Reebok tennis shoes. They have on Calvin Klein jeans. They have Tommy Hilfiger shirts on. Their little bellies are sticking out like Jamie's. Man, they've been eating good. And about that time, the tall, nice-looking guy comes and stands beside her. And she puts her arm around him. He puts his arm around her. And I bet old Zacchaeus' first impression was, I'm glad she got her a new man. She needed one bad. She begins to weep. Says, Mr. Zacchaeus, I owe you an apology, sir. You were here 30 days ago and I told you that my husband was possessed of demons from another world. I also told you that no man could chain him and no man could tame him. But that was before. A man called Jesus. Are spells legal up here? <laughs> Amen. But oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, that was before a mighty man, a miracle working man called Jesus passed by. He saw my husband as he was. He didn't perform any magic. He didn't blow on anybody. I said he didn't even blow on anybody. 
He didn't perform any magic, but Mr. Zacchaeus, there was power. There was authority. There was anointing on the words of Jesus, the Son of God. He looked at my husband. He commanded those demons to come to attention. And he commanded those demons to leave my husband. And he cast those demons out of my husband into a herd of swine. And they ran down over the bank and browned in the creek below. Mr. Zacchaeus, I just wanted you to know I've got a new husband now. Because Jesus passed by our house. And Mr. Zacchaeus, I just wanted you to know my children have a new daddy now because Jesus passed by our house. Listen to me tonight, friends. When Jesus passes by, it will make a new man out of you. It will make a new woman out of you. All things will pass away and all things will become new. Mr. Zacchaeus, maybe you can meet Jesus someday. Zacchaeus starts down the road and he said, man, what a day. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not a liberal? Say, they don't believe in this stuff. Are y'all listening to me or not? I said, aren't you glad you're not a liberal? They don't believe in this stuff. You say, you believe all the Bible. I believe it all. You mean you believe that Jonah was swallowed by a well? Yeah, let me tell you how conservative I am. If the Bible had said that Jonah swallowed the well, bless God, I'd have believed that. <laughs> Amen. Boy, I've, I've, I've seen a blind man healed today. I've seen a lady with an issue of blood cleansed. I've seen a demon possessed man set free. Maybe I can be Jesus someday. Seemingly at first, no one is there. He thought, maybe she just wanted to get away for a few days to regroup over the loss of her little boy. And about that time, the door opens. And there stands the little prettiest tan brown-haired, brown-eyed boy you've ever seen in your life. He says, Excuse me, son. I'm at the wrong house. He said, Oh, no, sir, Mr. Zach. Well, y'all slow up here, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no, sir, Mr. Zach. Matter of fact, my mama's been looking for you all day. But he said, son, I was here 30 days ago, and the lady who lived at this house said her only son had died. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. I was dead. I was dead. But I'm not dead anymore. Sit down here on the porch just a minute. Is that kids? Sit down there. Sit down here on the porch. Let me tell you what happened. 
My mom's a widow. My daddy died several years ago. And my mama prayed. And my mama agonized with God to not let me die. But I died. And Mr. Zacchaeus, my mom took me down to the funeral home and she bought me a nice casket and we had a visitation and we had my funeral. It was about 11.30 that morning. I got goosebumps waiting in line to get out. <laughs> Mr. Zacchaeus, it was about 11.30 in the morning. They had just had my funeral and we were coming out of the village of Maine in the procession of death. But what my mama did not know was on that same dusty road was another procession. Y'all going. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Hang on. Amen. Hey, what you don't understand is that morning we were coming out of the village of Nain in the procession of death. But on that same road was another procession. It was not the procession of death. It was the procession of deity. Well, I, I need to come up here and stay about two weeks. Hey, the procession of deity encountered the procession of death. And Mr. Zacchaeus, I don't know how much you understand about stuff like this, but we learned something that day. Right in the middle of that dusty road, we learned that death and deity can't hang around the same place very long. Jesus passed by sea. Our procession was headed toward the graveyard. But the other procession was headed toward glory. Our procession was being led by the pale horse called death. But the other procession was being led by the king of kings and the lord of lords. And that day, we learned something that day. We learned that the Lord reigned in Zion. And this man called Jesus. Have you ever met him, Mr. Zacchaeus? This man called Jesus stopped the procession of death. And by the way, that's what he came to do. And he extended his heart to my mother and said, Woman, don't weep anymore. See, I understand that feeling tonight because Brenda and I have lost a little boy pain and the hurt and the anguish that the loss of a child brings into your heart. But he said, Mr. Zacchaeus, he extended his heart to my mother and said, don't weep anymore. And after he extended his heart to my mother, he extended his hand to me. Excuse me. Oh, amen! I stand to do it. Amen! Hey, after he extended his heart to my mother, he extended his hand to me and said, Young man, I say it to thee, Arise. 
was just laying there minding my own business. And Jesus said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Thank you. Boy, that helped. <laughs> my heart started beating. And my lungs started breathing. And before I knew it, I was up out of that casket, alive. Mr. Zacchaeus, it caused a stir in the community. <laughs> It caused a stir. What do you mean, preacher? Let me ask you something. If your neighbor died, you signed the book, you sent cards, you took food to the home, you saw them lying in the casket at the funeral home, and two days later, you run into them, you run into them at the Walmart. <laughs> They're going to stir things up around you. <laughs> Mr. Zacchaeus, I was dead. But I'm not dead anymore. Because a mighty man, a miracle working man, called Jesus, passed by and raised me. You say, what kind of Baptist are you, preacher? Well, I'm one of them that got saved and can't get over it. And by the looks of things, some of you have. I said, I'm one of those Baptists who just got saved and I cannot get over meeting Jesus. Can't do it. See, I hadn't always been this way. I've been to college and seminary and everything. I've done it all. <laughs> My homiletics professor had a nervous breakdown after I got through his class. <laughs> Some of y'all stared looking at me tonight like, this guy's fell out of a tree somewhere. <laughs> I'm here to tell you tonight, I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I was dead. I was buried in the trespasses of my sins. And listen, there is a greater miracle than a man receiving his sight. There is a greater miracle than a lady with a blood disease being healed. There is a greater miracle tonight than seeing a little dead boy raised and brought back to life. And that greater miracle stands in front of you tonight. And it is the miracle of the new birth. I was lost, I'm found, I was blind, but I see I was dead. And I've been raised. And I just can't get over getting saved. And by the way, it's fun being saved. So the moral of the story is, if you're saved and you know it, notify your face. <laughs> hey, Mr. Zacchaeus. Mr. Zacchaeus. Maybe you can meet Jesus. Someday. He starts on his way home, and one of his buddies says, Zacchaeus, there's a man called Jesus preaching downtown. I believe as fast as his feet would carry him to the city square, he ran. And the Bible says he sought to see Jesus, who he was. 
He saw him. He had seen all he needed to see. He had heard all that he needed to hear. There was a genuine and a sincere desire in Zacchaeus' heart to see Jesus. But the Bible says he could not for the press. Now that wasn't USA Today or CNN or Fox News. That was the people keeping him from Jesus. And any time there is a desire, Brother Holm, any time there is a desire in a man's heart to get to Jesus, Satan's going to have something or someone there to keep him from Christ. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. He could not for the press. So the Bible says he climbed a sycamore tree. Y'all believe that? Well, if you can't say amen, do this. <laughs> and guess what? Jesus passed by. And he looked up in that tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, can you imagine? Jesus had never seen him before that day. He had never seen Jesus before that day. He didn't call him by his social security number. <laughs> he called him by his name. Zacchaeus! Make haste. Come down. I'm going to your house today. I, I don't believe Zacchaeus sat up in that tree and said, sing one more verse. <laughs> maybe next revival, maybe next crusade. Wait, you know, just give me one more shot at this. No. Sycamore trees don't have any bark on them. And one reason is he skinned that sucker so fast coming down. <laughs> and the Bible says he made haste and he came down and he received, listen to this, he received Jesus joyfully. Hallelujah. 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 He came down and he received Jesus joyfully. Did you hear what the hypocrites had to say? The Bible says the religious crowd began to murmur and complain and say, check this out. Check this out. Jesus is going home with a sinner. You believe that? Read it. That's what it says. It blew them away. They said, check the deal. Jesus is going home with a sinner. I'd like to have been there. I'd have jumped right in the middle of that crowd of hypocrites and said, listen, guys, that's the reason Jesus came. To seek and to save that which was lost. That included you and me. Amen. Well, I'd like to preach a little longer. Amen. I'm at the end of the story. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Jesus is alive and he is well. Amen. He's still saving. Amen. He's still restoring. Amen. He's still healing. Amen. He's still in business. And I think we all do all that we can 
to let every house in Cincinnati, Ohio know Jesus is still passing by.